Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be running down our top 15 kids games that we have played. Obviously, we haven't played all the kids games that are out there. But this is the top 15 kids games that my kids have enjoyed the most over all the years that we've been playing board games. So uh, yeah, let's get into this list. So number 15 on this list is a roll and move game. Yes, it's a roll and move game. It's a game that's been published by Haber, it's Monza, and it's a very, very good entry into A, the roll and move type genre, and B, the sort of racing games that you can get your kids into. So basically what you've got, you've got a load of dice, each with a different color on each side. You'll roll all the dice, and then you'll have to move your car forward based on the colors that you roll. And the colors on the dice correspond to colors on the spaces on the board. And there's some blocking spaces, you can sort of block your opponents. It's a very random game, but it does teach the kids their colors and stuff. It teaches the kids how to plan ahead, how to plan their moves and, and sort of be, get the most efficiency out of their die rolls. So yeah, it's a very good entry into roller move and also racing games. So number 14 on this list is a very strange dexterity game. Again, it's another Haber game. There's gonna be a lot of Haber games on this list, but it's a game called Berg. Ritter, and I think that's translated from German called Castle Kings or something. So basically what you've got, you've got these different size blocks and you've got this elasticated sort of band thing. And you're, what you'll be trying to do, you'll be each player will take one end of the elastic band and you'll be trying to place the elastic band over the blocks to move the blocks up the steps of this castle. And this is a really, really odd dexterity game. My kids really do love it. It's very, very difficult, very challenging. So it's, it, it works well for kids and adults alike. It's a very quirky game, it's got a lovely theme, and yeah, that's Berg Ritter. So number 13 on this list is a mainstream game that's been published by, it's a Ravensburger game, and it's Bugs in the Kitchen. So the way this works is you've got one of those little hex bug things, you load it with a battery and it, it bobbles around, and you've got this sort of maze with these forks, spoons, and knives that are plugged into the board. What you'll do, you roll a die and then you'll choose, based on what you roll, you'll choose a fork or a knife and you'll move it. And the aim of the game is to try and get your bug into your little recess before anyone else does. This one can last a little bit too long. So we sort of, uh, we cut it down to the first person that usually gets about three. Otherwise it can drag on for quite a while, but it's still a very innovative game. My kids love it and that's Bugs in the Kitchen. So number 12 on this list is yet another Haber game. Yes, there's another one. It's a stacking game. It's Rhino Hero. And this comes in two iterations. You've got Rhino Hero, the basically vanilla one. And then you've got Rhino Hero Super Battle, yeah? So the original one is basically like sort of just these cards that you'll be stacking. You can play these cards that will mix a game up like you have to move the rhino hero up the skyscraper or you'll have like a switcheroo type variant or something like that the player basically the way it works is the player that makes the tower collapse is the person that loses the game and everyone else will win and basically what happens every time we play this it's just trying to build the tower as high as possible and it's a delightful game it's only about eight or nine quid so if you ain't got it go and get it so number 11 on this list is another dexterity game it's ice cool and what you'll do this is like a, a game that's like a box within a box and it's a flicking game basically so everyone gets these penguins these plastic penguins that are loaded with this weight and you'll be making a maze up out of the box bits as it's like it's like a sort of a russian doll type thing and what you'll be doing you'll be flicking your penguins around this course trying to collect your fish and getting points for doing so and it's the first person to collect all their fish wins a game there is an ice cool too it's like a sort of a carbon copy but you can put these two games together and have this massive course and you can basically make up your own races and all that sort of stuff with it it's a wonderful game and that's Ice Core, so number 11. So number 10 on this list is a game that really does get me thinking because I can be a bit slow in my old age, right? It's Dr. Eureka. And the way this game works is everyone's given these sort of test tubes with these different colored balls in, and then you reveal a card that tells you to arrange your balls in your test tube according to what's on the card, right? You've got this frantic thing where you'll be exchanging balls, trying to figure out the quickest way to do it. And I'm absolutely rubbish at it, but my kids, are really, really good at it. And that sort of evens things up. That's one of the best things about this game is that 
kids love it, kids can play it, and they're generally better at it than adults, you know what I mean? But yeah, Dr. Eureka, very cheap, blue orange games, love it. So number nine on this list is a reprint of a game that we couldn't get hold of, but we played it years and years ago. It's Gulo Gulo, or Faro Gulo Gulo. And Faro Gulo Gulo is a little bit more complicated, it's a bit more meat on the bones, but essentially the way it works is you've got this bowl of these marbles with a stick in, and you'll be moving around the board, trying to get into the Pharaoh's tomb. When the game tells you to, you've got to reach into this bowl to pick up a marble based on the color of what the game tells you. And you're trying to pull the marble out without the stick hit the surface. And the wonderful thing about Gulo Gulo is, like we said with a lot of these games, the stakes are evened up because my fingers are like big fat sausages, but my little kids have got these little slender fingers. So they find it easier to pull the marbles out of the bowl. And I really struggle. And they always laugh at me because I'm useless at this game. But yeah, aside from that, this is a wonderful game. It's, I don't think you can get the original Gulo Gulo anymore, but Faro Gulo Gulo is quite readily available. And there you go, that's it. So number eight on this list is another Haber game. Oh my God, another Haber game. But this is Akabar. This is a flying carpet type game. And the one thing about this game that differentiates itself from all the other games that are on this list is you get one of those little squeezy puff things that blows air out of this, this squeezy puff thing and you'll be placing your magic carpet on the board and you'll be trying to blow it around with this squeezy puff thing trying to get it into these stalls and there's a certain amount of items you need to get and when you go into the stall and pick up the item you, you go to the next one and it's the first person to get all the items in their hand of tiles right and this is a one of a kind game i've not seen anything like it i don't think it's in print at the moment which is a bit of a bummer because we don't like talking about out of print games but it's a wonderful game it's very unique my kids love this one they absolutely love it they keep on calling for it and i'll, I'll put it away because i don't want to get bored with it you know what i mean but akabar is an astonishingly amazing game so number Seven on this list is a, another dexterity game. Plays out of four players, it's called Lift It. And the way this works is you've got these little bits of string with these hooks on, and you've got these different sort of shaped, plastic shaped balls or squares or stuff. They look like sort of girders out of like a building site, you know? And what you'll be trying to do, you'll reveal a card, it'll tell you to stack these shapes or these, these geometric shapes into a certain order. And the one thing that makes this special is that sometimes you, you've got to strap the hook to your head with this thing coming out of your head and you've got to use your swede to try and pick up the items and stack them up and this always makes us laugh it makes you look like a complete donut but it's really enjoyable game it's all done on a timer and and it looks colorful it's great for children it's a bit of a mainstream game but that don't matter because it's great so number six on this list is a game by Ares Games. It's called Dino Quest. And in this one, you've got these wonderfully sculpted dinosaur miniatures that will be trying to run away from this volcano by playing these cards that match the terrain that you're going to be going on. All the time, you'll be trying to carry this egg to the finish line, right? And one thing you've got to be mindful of is that you're going to have to roll this dice and random events will happen, right? And this is a wonderfully produced game. It's a really professionally produced game. It, it really does ramp up the quality in kids' games. And it's a, it's a very, very simple game, but it's very, very tense. It's very, very close. Everyone's got two dinosaurs. You can lose one of them, but you're still in the game. And it, it always ends up very, very close with these sort of bonus points that you can pick up along the way. And we really do love Dino Quest. It's, it's just one of the best kids' games that we've ever played. So number five on this list is a game that utilizes an app on a phone. And we don't, we're not really big fans of these sort of app-based games because we know that technology moves so quick that there may be a come a time when apps become defunct and you can't use that game again, right? So, but this game is really quite special for children. It's called Raw Catch the Monster and you will load this app up and you'll have this board. What you'll be doing, one person plays the monster and the other players play these sort of scientist characters or these different characters that are trying to catch the monster. You'll be using these QR codes, you'll be scanning different things on the board, right? And the app will play you these sort of sound effects that will give you clues as to where the monster is and you'll be moving through the city and through these different areas like a, a zoo and all that sort of stuff and you'll be trying to find out where the monster 
is. And eventually one of the scientist characters will catch the monster or the monster will escape. And it's, it's just, this is game is it's absolutely fantastic. It sort of flew under the radar. I mean, I, I haven't really seen many people talking about this, but insofar as latching onto that sort of that sort of app based thing that kids are brought up with these days, it's second to none. It really is good. I don't know where you can get it from now, but uh, yeah, it's, it's raw catch the monster. So number four on this list is a an old game that we had years ago called La Pinguine, I think it's called in French. But now it's been bought by Fantasy Flight. It's called Hey, That's My Fish. And this is a very, very simple game. You, the, it's a bit of a pain in the bum to set up. You've got to set all these tiles out. But once you've done that, everybody will take a different colour penguin. You get three penguins or four penguins or something like that. And you'll be placing them out onto this sort of modular setup. And on these tiles, you've got different types of fish. And what you'll be doing, you'll be moving your penguin from one tile to another. You can move as far as you like in a straight line. But the tile that you came from will melt into the sea. And once all the players can't move anymore, you'll count up the amount of fish that you've got. And the player with the most fish is the winner. It's, it's an incredibly simple game. But it gets kids thinking about planning ahead, not only to try and get the best fish, but to try and cut off their opponents. And it, my kids love this game. They really do. Like we said, the setup is a bit of a bummer. I'd recommend that you download a sort of a, a makeshift board from Board Game Geek so you, at least you don't have to sort of separate them out and they, they're all in straight lines, right? But it's a wonderful game. That's hey. That's my fish or la penguin. So number three on this list is a motorized game from Hasbro. Oh my God, did he say Hasbro? Yes, I said Hasbro, right? This is Lupin Louie and you just chuck the batteries in and what you got, you got these sort of flipper things that you'll be pushing down. Lupin Louie will go round and round and round and you can bash Louie up and he'll be floating up and down. It seems very difficult to get Louie to do what you want when you first start playing this. But all of a sudden, the game just clicks and you sort of know when to press the flipper and how hard to press it. There are some sort of DIY hacks to this that allow you to play with eight players and there's, there's a couple of other little hacks you can do with this so Loop and Louie is one of the most fun mainstream Hasbro type games that we've played it's oh, it's a wonderful game you've got to play it with four though any less than that and you can have a, a gap in between where Louie goes right so it's a little bit unfair but all the players will stay in the game until the end because even if you lose all your chickens you're going to stay in the game because you can still mess up your opponents right so that's Lupin Louie. So number two on this list is a, another dexterity game. It's a game that we picked up from Korea. It's called Coconuts. And what you've got, you've got these plastic monkeys with spring-loaded arms. And you'd be putting these little plastic coconuts into this little recess on their hands, yeah. And then you've got these cups that you put in the center of the table and you'll be pinging these coconuts into these cups. And when you do that, when you get a coconut into the cup, you'll put it on your display and you've got to get three, two, one. And when you get the top coconut and you get the top cup, on your thing, you win the game. And my kids absolutely love this. Everybody I've played this with love this game. It's one of the best dexterity games that you can play. I think you can get it on Amazon. I think, I think it's still in print. I think there's a there's another version called Coconuts Duo. So if you get that and the original Coconuts, you can have like six players. Or you could just get like two lots of Coconuts or whatever. So yeah, that is our number two. So number one on this list is the little brother of one of our favorite dexterity games maybe the favourite dexterity game that we've ever played. It's Pitch Car Mini, and I'm going to have a look. I've got it right here. It's Pitch Car Mini, and this is perfect to introduce kids into that sort of dexterity flicking type thing, right? Because it's very, very small. It does exactly the same thing as its bigger brother. It's got loads of expansions for this. Basically, what you'll be doing, you'll be making out a little racing track out of MDF pieces that will slot into each other like a little jigsaw. And you'll be putting your little disc on the board and you'll be flicking it around this track. And it's just the first person to cross the finish line after a certain amount of predetermined laps. It's a couple of rules where if you've fly off the board you have to come back to where you were or if you turn over if you knock somebody off but they're minimal and my kids love this game they love making the noises of all the racing cars and all that sort of thing you know what kids are like right but yeah pitch car mini perfect for children because it's very very small very portable the only thing we found about this is that some of the pieces do sort of warp a little bit so they don't tend to slot in you get these sort of ridges but so somebody needs to push down on the on the pieces when they when they're flying around the corner yeah this is one of the best children's games that you can get today. So there you go. That's the top 15 kids games that we've played that we enjoy. It would have been a top 10, but there's so many decent kids games out there these days. We just couldn't condense it down into a manageable list of 10, right? So there you go. You've got an extra five bonus games for your time and effort here today. So there you go. Remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. And if you made it this far, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.